Hello. So in this video, we're going to talk about uh, the halogenation of alkynes. Just like alkenes, uh, halogens react, or alkynes react with uh, halogens. Uh, and just like alkenes, we're only talking about uh, chlorine and bromine here. Uh, the reaction with iodine is not very productive. It's endothermic, uh, and, and so it doesn't really behave very well. Uh, if you remember uh, from studying the reactions of alkenes, that the alkenes undergo uh, additions of halogens to form these vicinal dihalides. So there are two halogens on the molecule, and uh, they're on neighboring carbons, and you get this, this uh, anti-addition stereochemistry. Um, oh, and uh, I don't want to forget that, that this molecule is also, oops, hold on, something silly happened here. What are you doing? Right, there we go. So, uh, this molecule is chiral, uh, but the reactive reactant is not, so uh, the enantiomer of this structure is also formed. And the reason that you get this this anti-addition, uh, if you remember, is because we have this uh, really interesting uh, three-membered ring transition state. Let's take that around a little bit. Of, I uh, will pick bromine for example, and. You know, if we start with a cis alkene like I did, uh, you get this bromonium transition state. Both R groups are on the same side, and because of uh, the, the, the second step is an SN2 reaction, the other halogen attacks from the opposite side, so you get, you get anti-addition. Things are a little bit different in the alkyne world, uh, but generally everything alkenes, most things alkenes do, alkynes can do twice. Uh, and so it's, first of all, possible that if you have just one equivalent uh, of a halogen, mole halogen molecule, you can get, um, I don't need this extra carbon, you can get uh, addition of that halogen across to the uh, the alkyne and make a, a dihalo alkene as the major product. And then you might be suspicious that because I put something down as the major product, there's a minor project product. There is. It's worth talking about here because this is one place where it's a little bit different than the alkene case. Uh, and that's because in addition to getting the anti- product is the major product, this reaction also produces a little bit of the cis product is the minor product, where the, the alkene version pretty much only produces the uh, anti-addition product. And then, uh, of course, it can happen twice because there's still a pi bond after that first addition you can do a second addition across the, the alkene and end up with halogen atoms at all over the place. And neither of those carbon atoms now are chirality centers, so the thing doesn't have any stereochemistry to talk about. Um, and, and honestly, things that look like this aren't always that useful in organic chemistry. So we're not, we don't, wouldn't see this reaction a whole lot in um, the syntheses of, of drug compounds or other, other high, high sort of high use compounds, but it is a reaction that alkynes undergo. Uh, the last sort of parting piece of information I have about this reaction, because uh, there's not much to say here, is that the, the mechanism is not well understood. Um, if you just watched the video on the mech on the hydrohalogenation reaction of alkynes, you know I talked a little bit about how that mechanism was thought to be different than the alkene version, and again this mechanism is thought to be different from its alkene version for some of the same reasons, um, and some different reasons as well. So for example, if we took our our 
three membered ring intermediate, and instead of it coming from an alkene, comes from an alkyne, we have that extra double bond in there. Uh, and we have all this, this extra ring strain. And, and yes, the, the three membered ring uh, is already has a lot of angle strain, but, but the, the, the double bond, which wants to have a certain kind of geometry, uh, you know, wants to have 120 degree bond angles instead of 60. And here we want to have 90, or here we had to have a 100 and 105 degree bond angles, or I'm sorry, 109 degree bond angles, and we have 90. Here we want to have 120, and we have 90. So that's there's more angle strain here, and add to that the existence of the the sin addition product suggests that the mechanism is different, uh, but it has it's still not fully well understood. And I'm going to guess it's probably going to stay that way, given that these sorts of compounds aren't often in high demand. In the next video in this sequence, we'll start talking about the hydrogenation or the reduction of alkynes. So uh, stay tuned. Thank you for watching.